Chapter 103 Apart from Compromising Kayla said something against her heart. She subconsciously put her hand on her stomach and bit her lips. Dr. West did not say anything. It seemed that this was something she had expected. Her patient was a public figure, and this child would definitely block her way. Are you sure? You have just urine less than three months. I will prescribe you some medicine. You can go back and eat it. It will be done tomorrow. You can come back to check it tomorrow. After saying that, Dr. West took the pen and wrote down the name of the medicine on the prescription note. Take one pill for 12 hours. After saying that, Dr. West did not look at her again and went to do his own things. Kayla took the prescription and went to get the medicine. If she wanted to deceive Tia, whether it was the medicine flow or the flow of people, she had to take out powerful evidence to prove it. When Frank saw her, he wanted to stop her, but when he got close, Kayla was gone. Dr. West took the medical record and was ready to go to the room to patrol, but he saw his son was on duty again and could not help but call him to scold him. This time, Frank didn't wait for the gynecologist to call him. He took the initiative to lick his face and walked over, looking like an obedient child. Mom, what did that Kayla come here for? Curiosity killed the cat. It has nothing to do with you. Dr. West tapped his forehead. How can it be okay? Calvin, you know, she is Calvin's woman. Isn't she pregnant? She came to see me for an abortion. Dr. West said, young people nowadays are really like this. And you, it's fine if you don't get married. If you dare to go out and mess around and make a girl's stomach bigger, I'll teach you a lesson. Before Dr. West could finish, Frank had already run away. As he ran, he called Calvin. Calvin was his brother. He had to tell him such explosive news. Frank called several times in a row but failed to contact Calvin. Finally, he followed the principle of doing good things to the end and sent Calvin an email. Kayla took the medicine, got into the car, threw the pills directly, and changed into two pieces of vitamins that looked similar. When they got home, Tia had already come uninvited. At the same time, he also brought a middle-aged woman over. He should be afraid that he could not deal with her directly and found helpers. Kayla opened the door and invited them in. He politely and thoughtfully poured a cup of water for each of them. Kayla put the medicine bag with the logo of the hospital on the coffee table and sat on the sofa opposite the two of them. Where did you go? We made an appointment at nine o'clock. It's almost ten o'clock now, Tia asked directly as she sat down. I went to the hospital, I'll do as you say. Don't worry, Kayla said directly. Kayla said and looked at Tia's assistant meaningfully. Tia was originally worried that she would not cooperate, but her attitude was completely beyond her expectations. Kayla took the prescription note out of the bag. This is the medicine prescribed by Dr. West, the director of the Department of Gynecology at PUC Hospital. I have already taken one. If you don't believe it, you can let the lady next to you take a look. I guess she should be a professional. Hearing this, Tia glanced at the person. The person immediately took the prescription note and opened the medicine bag to take a look. When she opened the medicine bag to check, Kayla's heart was in his throat. He held his hands and nervously grabbed the sofa cushion. Fortunately, that person only took a quick glance before putting the medicine bag back and nodding at Tia. Tia nodded in satisfaction and smiled at Kayla. Miss Hayes, I admire your adaptability. This way, we can save a lot of time. Kayla breathed a sigh of relief and forced a smile. Miss Black, Thank you for your appreciation, he said. I might as well tell you that the Lowe's is in troubled times right now. 
If Calvin wants to hold the lows in his hands, he will need to borrow external forces. The fastest and safest way for him to borrow external forces is to form a marriage alliance. Tia stopped here and gave Kayla a kind smile. Kayla, do you understand what I mean? Kayla wanted to pretend that she didn't understand, but Tia didn't give her a chance. I know you like my son. Many women like him. But you have to understand that neither you nor those women can marry her. He must marry a woman who is helpful to his career. This is the so-called marriage. Kayla was not an idiot. Of course, she understood what Tia meant. Tia wanted her to retreat and take the initiative to withdraw. After calculating the child in her belly, he immediately began to scheme against her, not giving her any chance to breathe. I have already helped him settle the study procedures for your brother. The plane will fly to America tonight. As for you. Kayla swallowed his saliva, pretending to be calm and nervous. What did you do to Ivan? Tia raised his hand and gave her a calm look. He said, as long as you do as I say, you will be able to see your brother soon. She never expected that Tia would do this to her. Tia's well-maintained fingers impatiently knocked on the surface of the coffee table. The light sound of knocking brought Kayla back from her absent-minded state. Kayla turned her gaze from the coffee table to Tia's beautiful and calm face. She lowered her shoulders and compromised, What else do you want me to do? Tia picked up the phone she had placed on the coffee table and threw it to her. Call Calvin, break up. Kayla smiled bitterly. Calvin and I are only in a contract. There is no such thing as breaking up. Tia snorted coldly. Don't try to play any tricks. Don't forget your brother. Tia was obviously threatening her. She helplessly dialed Calvin's number. After the call connected, it rang a few times and automatically turned to the voice message box. She breathed a small sigh of relief and said to Tia, who was staring at her movements like an eagle, no one answered the phone. Tia gave her a warning look, then reached out and took the phone out of her hand. She turned on the speaker and dialed again. The number you have dialed cannot be connected for the time being. I will transfer the voice message box to you. The facts proved that Kayla was telling the truth. Tia returned the phone to Kayla. It seemed that Calvin had cut off all contact with everyone. This way, she could be at ease and remove the annoying woman Kayla from her son. It's good that no one has answered. Your contract with Signal Limited is about to expire. I heard that you have no intention of renewing the contract. You should finish your work as soon as possible and go to America to meet your brother. Do not appear in front of Calvin again. After hearing this, Kayla did not immediately laugh coldly in her heart. Sure enough, after this vicious old witch dealt with the child in her belly, she was going to kill her from Calvin's side. Even if she had already guessed that it would be like this, what could she do? Apart from compromising, she still compromised. Chapter 104 Doctor Help me. After Tia threatened her, he left with his people. Kayla sat in the living room for an unknown period of time. The phone that he threw on the coffee table rang softly. It was the sound of the low battery. Not long after, the phone struggled to emit the last light and automatically turned off the phone. At the same time, it was late at night in Country A. After a day of work, Calvin finally returned to the Lowe's tiredly. Before S.I.'s Heron woke up, several uncles and brothers of the Lowe's could not wait to jump out to compete for power and profit, which made him very tired. He didn't want Kayla to worry for her. After talking to her on the phone that day, he blocked all calls from the country. He thought that if Kayla really had something urgent that she couldn't find him, she would call Rudy to contact him not to mention that he had sent someone to protect her. At present, 
the only thing he was worried about was whether Tia would do something at this time. Calvin was exhausted. He entered the study, lit a cigarette, and took a deep breath. The nicotine could alleviate his fatigue. He took a laptop from the side, opened it, and began to deal with domestic affairs. Today was fine. There were not many things that needed his decision. He quickly browsed through the contents of the document and replied one by one. The last thing he opened was the email that Frank had sent him. The content was very simple, but the message it conveyed shocked him. Kayla was pregnant, but he knew it in this way. His heart was enveloped by great ecstasy. Calvin immediately called Kayla's phone. He called him several times, but his phone was turned off. He did not give up and called the fixed phone at home. However, he owed money and stopped the phone. What was going on? He remembered that before he left, Kayla was obviously on her period. How could she be pregnant for two months? Unable to contact Kayla, he could only call Frank, who told him the news, hoping to get some useful information from him. Just as Frank came out of the operating room and washed his hands at the detoxification pool, a little nurse came over with his phone. Dr. Cheen, your phone. Frank went over to take a look at the caller ID. It was Calvin, who had been missing for many days. He motioned for the nurse to help him pick up the phone. Then he lowered his head and continued to wash his hands. The nurse picked up the phone and put the phone beside his ear. He used his head and shoulders to hold it. He wiped his hands and said the first sentence in this awkward position, Hello, my young master Calvin. What are you doing today? You actually have time to call me. Calvin did not have time to play jokes with him. He asked directly, The email you sent me is real. What is real? Frank reached for the phone and returned to his normal posture. Calvin suppressed the flames of joy in his heart and carefully confirmed, didn't you send me an email saying that Kayla is pregnant? Frank had just come down from the operating table. With Calvin's reminder, his relaxed nerves finally thought of this matter. Yes, yes. I saw her illness at my mother's place that day. Frank paused for a moment and observed that there was no one around. He lowered his voice and said carefully, I saw her several times in the hospital. Yesterday, I saw her in the hospital again. I heard from my mother that she was here for an abortion. What happened? Did you just know that she was pregnant? Then, is that child yours? Don't even know that you've been cuckolded. When Calvin heard Frank's slander, he cursed angrily, nonsense. After he finished cursing, he remembered that he still had to ask for help. He softened his tone and said, I'll be back soon. According to what you said, Auntie Lynn should be her attending physician. Help me tell your mother that she must not be operated on. Everything can wait until I come back. Before Calvin could finish speaking, the phone was hung up. Frank's phone was automatically turned off because of the low battery. When Frank found the matching charge round turned it on to call Calvin, Calvin had already sat in the car to the airport, and his phone was forgotten on the table in the study. Calvin wished he could grow wings and immediately fly to Kayla to ask for the reason. No matter what, he could not let Kayla abort the child. He hoped that everything would come back in time. Kayla charged her phone with electricity and rushed the rest of the contraceptive pill into the sewer before returning to her room to sleep. She could only comfort herself in this way. There was nothing worse than the current situation. Kayla tossed and turned for the whole night. She was so tired that she could not fall asleep. Tomorrow, Tia would probably take her to the hospital. What if she was exposed? Tia would definitely force her to abort the child. She was worried when she thought of this. Kayla did not sleep the whole night. 
When she got up in the morning, she called Fabian and asked him to accompany her to the hospital. Fabian did not ask anything. She put down the work in her hand and came. She did not know what Fabian told Eleanor. Eleanor also came together. She wore a wide white t-shirt and jeans with a plain face and came out. She went downstairs to Fabian's car. Fortunately, she did not meet Tia. Kayla sat in the back seat of the car. She first greeted Eleanor and then greeted Fabian. Eleanor asked her where she was going, and she directly reported to the PUC hospital. Yesterday, she went to the hospital. Because she was afraid that Billy would find out about her pregnancy, she secretly went there like a thief. Today, because of Eleanor's help and arrangements, the road was unimpeded, and she saw Dr. West without much effort. Dr. West thought that the famous young actor had made his girlfriend pregnant, but he did not expect to see her. Miss Hayes, come with me. Even though Dr. West had many questions in her heart, she still calmly brought her into the examination room. Kayla followed the doctor's instructions and lay down on the examination bed. Dr. West gave her a ultrasound check and wrote on the examination report that there was only one living child in the palace, so she was allowed to come down. You didn't take that medicine. Kayla took advantage of the time when Dr. West was questioning her and snatched her diagnosis book. At this time, Tia's voice and the nurse's voice suddenly came from outside. Madam, the doctor is checking the patient inside. You can't go in. Seeing that Tia was about to rush in without care, Kayla suddenly knelt in front of Dr. West. Dr. West was shocked and looked at her. What are you doing? Dr. West, I beg you to help me. I didn't take the abortion medicine you gave me yesterday. This is my child. How can I be willing to abandon him? But the woman outside, she... When Dr. West heard her say this, he instantly understood. It seemed that this was a show of bullying the weak. Dr. West felt a sense of justice. He pulled Kayla up from the ground and opened a diagnosis report again. He handed it to Kayla and left without saying anything. Kayla held the diagnosis report that Dr. West did not have a signature and imitated her handwriting to imitate Dr. West's signature. On the other side, Dr. West went out very timely and blocked Tia who had just broken through the nurse's blockade at the door of the examination room. It could not be seen that it was an acquaintance. Drew, why is it you? Mrs. S.I., how have you been? Chapter 105 It was all thanks to you. Dr. West looked much more graceful than Tia. She pulled off the mask hanging on her ear and let the other side hang on her ear. Look at how agitated you are. Are you sick? Tia and Drew had known each other since they were young. They were high school classmates. However, the two of them had always disliked each other. It was only after the college entrance examination that one of them went to medical school and the other went abroad to study. The last time they met was when Frank was studying abroad. She met him by chance when she went to visit him. Because their son was good friends, the two of them chatted for a while. In this situation, if Tia dared to say that he was here to supervise Kayla's pregnancy, it would be equivalent to admitting his ugly family in front of outsiders. Tia would not be so stupid and would not give Drew a chance to make fun of her. She immediately pretended to have a stuffy chest, but her white and ruddy complexion was very healthy no matter how she looked at it. I don't know what happened recently. I always feel stuffy in the chest and short of breath. I also feel dizzy. Tia told Dr. West about his condition. It's especially easy to get heady. It doesn't look pleasing to the eye. Drew was amazed by Tia's talent in acting. At her level, even the famous actor who forged the examination report in the examination room could not compare to her. How about this, Mrs. S.I.? 
I still have a patient inside. You go hang an expert number first. I'll ask the nurse to arrange you in front. What do you think? Tia wanted to refuse, but before he could say the words to refuse, Drew said, I'm really sorry. The patient inside took the abortion medicine yesterday and it hurt for a few hours. The pregnancy bag hasn't come down yet. I have to give her a clear palace operation first. In your situation, women will appear at their age. Seeing that she was giving her face and receiving such a useful message, Tia did not continue to make things difficult for her. Then I will wait for you in your office. Okay. Drew sent Tia away like a plague. After closing the door of the examination room and entering, Kayla had already put the fake examination report into her bag. Drew pretended not to know anything and reminded them about the rehabilitation knowledge of pregnancy. The two of them lingered in the room for almost an hour before they went out. The examination room and the human traffic room were connected. The two of them ended the conversation. Dr. West first went out of the examination room. After about ten minutes, Kayla walked out of the human traffic room with a pale face, touching his lower abdomen. Calvin never thought that he had rushed back from country A to stop him, but he still did not catch up. Before he recovered from the huge surprise, he had lost the child forever. Kayla leaned against the wall of the corridor and moved forward step by step. This time, she was simply acting with her life. No role she played before could compare to the realism of her acting now. Her weak appearance was really like a woman who had just undergone an abortion. She finally moved to the nearest chair and sat down to rest. There was also a woman who had not left after the operation. Their expressions were almost the same. Kayla did not dare to relax, but when she looked up, she saw Calvin standing not far away like a tree stump, staring at her blankly. After not seeing him for more than half a month, she felt as if he was a lifetime ago. He was covered in dust and looked haggard. His thin lips were tightly pursed. He took off his black suit and placed it on his wrist. He wore a white shirt and stood there, looking at her without moving. Calvin narrowed his deep eyes, his gaze lingering on her for a long time. Kayla was flustered by his gaze. How was she going to explain it to him? In a short distance of a few meters, they were separated into two worlds. She wanted to explain, but she could not say anything. Tia walked out of Dr. West's office and walked towards Calvin. Her mouth opened and closed as she said something. Gradually, she could not hear anything. Her vision blurred. She wanted to hear it clearly. No matter how hard she tried she could not see and hear it clearly. Before Kayla passed out, she thought that Tia's move was really not brilliant at all. She wanted to kill two birds with one stone to get rid of the child in her belly and let her leave Calvin. However, she let Calvin find out that she had been involved in this matter. This undoubtedly made it worse for their mother and son relationship that was in imminent danger. Calvin watched as Kayla closed her eyes and weakly leaned to one side. He pushed Tia, who was chattering incessantly beside his ear, to the side. He wanted to go over and catch her, but someone moved faster than him. Fabian, who was dressed in a suit, had been waiting at the door of the operating room. Seeing that Kayla had fainted, he rushed over to catch her immediately. He carefully held the fainted Kayla in his arms, his eyes filled with pain. Calvin was a step too late. Just as his hand touched Kayla's hand, it was blocked by Fabian. Since you can't protect her, stay away from her. After saying that, Fabian looked at Tia who followed him meaningfully. He picked her up and left under the guidance of Dr. West who had heard the news. Dr. West arranged a bed for Kayla to rest and checked his physical condition. He could not say much about his current condition. 
he just said that this was a normal phenomenon and let the patient rest more. Calvin stood where he was, watching Fabian carry Kayla away, his hands clenched into fists. What did Fabian mean? He turned his head to look at the woman who always had the flag of for his own good. It was his mother who forced her woman to kill his son. He hated her so much, but he could not find a way to vent. He was an absolute bastard. You ah. Don't blame me. I'm doing this for your own good. That woman wanted to use her child to threaten you. I'm doing this for your own good. Tia called out to Calvin, who was on the verge of going on a rampage. Calvin clenched his hands into fists. He clenched them tightly and then released them. He only managed to suppress his anger after a few more times. His voice was hoarse and low as he asked, Letting my woman kill my child is for my own good? Mom. Tia was stunned when he called her mother. Calvin hadn't called her mother for many years. She didn't know why, but Calvin suddenly stopped calling her mother on the third year of high school. I. Tia looked at her son's heartbroken expression and suddenly felt like she had done something wrong. Calvin, listen to me. The only reply was Calvin's determined back. Considering Kayla's identity, Dr. West arranged a separate ward for her. Not long after Dr. West left, Kayla woke up. Fabian stood by her bed and saw that she was about to sit up when she woke up. He quickly went over to help her. Kayla, how are you feeling? She shook her head. Her face was so pale that it made one's heart ache. Using Fabian's strength, she sat up and leaned against the head of the bed. She said lightly, I'm fine. Thank you, Fabian. Fabian saw that her complexion was so bad. He knew that she said that she was fine because she was afraid that he would be too worried for her. If you really want to thank me, then take good care of your body. The smell of disinfectant in the air stimulated her nasal cavity, making her stomach turn upside down. The feeling of vomiting was too fierce. Kayla wanted to hold it back but it was too late. She hurriedly pushed Fabian away, pulled over the trash can under the bed, and vomited to her heart's content. When Calvin knocked on the door and entered, he saw this scene. He was so distressed that he wanted to go over and help. Just as he reached the bedside with a tissue, he was punched by Fabian. You still have the nerve to show up. It's all thanks to you that she has become like this. Chapter 106 You Better Behave Yourself Calvin raised his hand to block Fabian's other punch and pushed him to the side. He raised his hand to wipe the blood from his nose. He glanced at the angry Fabian and coldly glanced at him. This is a matter between me and Kayla. It has nothing to do with you. After he finished speaking, he walked towards Kayla. Fabian raised his foot to block his way. The two men were separated by a square inch, silently confronting each other. No one was willing to give in. At this time, Kayla had already finished vomiting. She looked at the two men who were silently confronting each other and said weakly, You. She had just started speaking when the two of them had already started to fight. Stop. Kayla shouted weakly. The two of them looked at her at the same time. One of them had dried blood under his nose, and the other had turned into a panda eye. She did not have time to deal with the two men at the same time. Her mind was in a mess, and there was also Tia's probing gaze at the door, forcing her not to mess around. If she said anything wrong now, all of her previous performances would have been for naught. There was also her little brother. Maybe. The consequences were too terrible. Thinking of this, Kayla sighed helplessly and said, I am very tired. I want to rest. All of you, go out. The last order was filled with anger. The two men who had been asked to leave glared at each other. 
Fabian took the lead and said, Kayla, have a good rest. I'm right outside. Call me if you need anything. Fabian gave Kayla a comforting look and took the lead to leave. Calvin looked at her and wanted to say something, but his lips moved and he did not say anything. He had a lot of things to say to her, wanted to ask if she hurt, wanted to ask if she missed him, wanted to ask why she was bullied and did not contact him. He had so many things he wanted to say to her, but when the words reached his mouth and he saw her pale and weak appearance, Every sentence that came to his mouth made him feel like there was a fishbone stuck in his throat, unable to spit out a single word. Calvin's pair of burning deep eyes stared at her without blinking for a long time, and she lowered her head guiltily. After a long time, the sound of leather shoes rubbing against the ground knocked on her drum membrane, gradually fading away. Finally, the sound of the sick door closing. The familiar footsteps could no longer be heard. Kayla looked up. She was the only one left in the empty room. Her heart was empty with the empty room. It was so empty that it was a heart-wrenching pain. When he turned around to leave, she almost couldn't help but call out to him. She wanted to explain everything to him. She wanted to tell him that the baby was still there. She was very healthy and stayed in her stomach obediently. No matter how much she wanted to tell him, she could only think about it. After an unknown period of time, someone politely knocked on the door of the ward. Kayla came back to her senses from the gloomy clouds and looked over. Tia had already walked in uninvited. She perked up and watched Tia walk to the chair beside the bed and sit down. Tia chose to come in at this time. It seemed that Calvin had already left. Just as Kayla thought of this, she saw Fabian appear at the door. She smiled at him, indicating that it was okay. She could deal with it. Fabian made a gesture to her, gesturing in a mute language, call me if there is anything. Previously, because of the role, she had dabbled in this aspect so she understood. She smiled and nodded. Tia looked at them as if they did not exist. She looked at them and frowned. Although Kayla was not her daughter-in-law, she was very unhappy in her heart. Her dark face immediately darkened a bit, and the disdain in her eyes when she looked at Kayla deepened. When Fabian received Kayla's answer, he turned around and disappeared by the door. The ward door that he pushed open did not close again. Kayla knew that he must be by the door. When he raised his head and met Tia's disdainful eyes, there was more confidence. Miss Black, I have already done as you said. Can you tell me where my brother is? Tia coldly sized her up from top to bottom and said contemptuously, Don't worry. As long as you do as I say, you will see your brother soon. When Kayla heard Tia's warning, he was furious. He struggled to get up, but because his body was too weak, he weakly lay back down and said angrily, What else do you want me to do? The child is gone now. Tia, don't go too far. Tia looked at her like this. Her long fingers with blood-red nails were pressed against her lips. She gently hissed and glanced at the door meaningfully. You are so loud. Do you want your lover to come in and help you vent your anger? Kayla followed her gaze and looked at the open door of the ward. He did not answer, but his hands on the quilt were tightly clenched to show his master's anger. Tia was very satisfied with her performance. He said hypocritically, Kayla, to be honest, Auntie actually likes you very much. You are not only beautiful, but also considerate, and your acting is also good. If not for our standpoint, maybe we could have become friends of forgetting years. She scoffed at Tia's hypocritical words. If she wanted to say something, she should say it quickly. If she continued to stay, she was afraid that she would not be able to maintain her acting skills and would hit people. Miss Black, you flatter me. 
I am just more sensible than ordinary people. Kayla suppressed his anger. If you have anything else, just tell me. I will do what I can. When Tia heard this, he immediately smiled and praised, Kayla, I really like you more and more. After Tia finished speaking, he opened the bag he carried with him and took out a plane ticket from inside. He handed it to her. This is eight o'clock tonight. The plane ticket to the U.S. The anger in Kayla's eyes turned into two sharp swords. She did not hesitate to stab at Tia. She really could not wait to make her disappear beside Calvin. Tia did not wait for her answer. He stuffed the plane ticket under her clenched fists and continued, I have already ordered people to pack up your things. They should be on their way here by now. Also, Tia took out another card from her bag. There are two million dollars in it. As long as you siblings don't spend money recklessly, this money will be enough for you to use for a while. Just take it as the nutrition fee for your pregnancy. Kayla reached out and grabbed the plane ticket. Her bloodless lower lip was bitten until it was white. After a while, she said, I can't take a plane. I'm airsick. This was a disguised rejection, and it was also her last struggle. Tia obviously understood what she meant. He seemed to have expected that she would do this. He reached out and took the extremely wrinkled ticket from her pinch. He took out a ticket for a luxury cruise ship from his bag and smiled. It doesn't matter if you're airsick. I also bought the first class cabin of the Royal Princess Soria luxury cruise ship for you. You don't pass out, do you? Kayla did not answer. Tia was finally satisfied this time. He placed the cruise ticket and the bank card of two million on the bedside cabinet. He took the phone she had placed on the cabinet and stood up. Someone will come to pick you up later. You should take care of yourself. Chapter 107 He was forced far away. Kayla watched as Tia left. She clenched her fists and her nails dug into her palms unconsciously. There was a dispute at the door. Fabian's face, which was wearing a hat, flashed in front of the door. She heard someone shouting in the corridor, isn't that Fabian? Then there were all kinds of screams and sighs. It seemed that Fabian had been discovered. Not long after, the noise outside the door quieted down. Kayla got out of bed and was ready to leave. Just as her feet touched the ground, the door of the ward was pushed open. She looked up and saw the middle-aged woman who visited with Tia that day. She was wearing a pink dress today, which made her look like she was still pretending to be young. The two men who came in with her were two big and tall men. Miss Hayes, we have met. Let me introduce myself. My surname is Guo, and I am Madam's personal assistant. Madam told me to send you to the boat. The woman spoke in a polite tone, but she did not sound respectful at all. As soon as the woman finished speaking, the two men who came in with her came over to hold her, one on the left and the other on the right, not allowing her to struggle at all. Assistant Guo, who was using the tiger's might, walked over, threw the ticket and bank card into her bag, and waved his hand. She could not help but be held hostage as she walked out of the ward. Just as she walked to the door, Assistant Guo's cold voice came from behind her, Madam said that if Miss Hayes doesn't cooperate, she will get someone to cut off her brother's arms. Kayla's back stiffened, and she forcefully swallowed the words that were about to come out of her mouth. That vicious old witch, Tia, actually cut off all her paths of retreat. Kayla was forced to be escorted by the people sent by Tia into the car and drove towards the dock of the next city. What she didn't know was that more than ten minutes ago, there was a woman with the same figure as her who was dressed in the same clothes as her, pretending to be her and leading the person Calvin arranged to follow by her side to the airport. Kayla sat in the back seat of the car. 
she was caught in the middle by two King Kongs on the left and right, and her pale face became even worse. She vomited all the way to the dock of the next city. She sat powerlessly in the Seaview coffee shop on the dock. Her ship had not arrived yet, and the sky gradually darkened. The place where the sea and the sky met had already turned into a line, stretching in her direction. The rainbow on the shore gradually lit up, and there were lights in the distance. She was controlled by someone and cut off all contact with the outside world. She was completely isolated. Kayla withdrew her gaze from the French window and was looked at the coffee in front of her. The coffee had been cold for a long time. There was a thin layer of membrane on it. She threw a cube of sugar into the plate and stirred it with a spoon in boredom. The bitter fragrance of the coffee lingered on the tip of her nose. It hooked up her vomit and made her stomach emit a dash sound. She was hungry. Kayla frowned slightly. She couldn't go on like this. She hadn't eaten much these past few days. Her body now didn't belong to her alone. She didn't want to treat the child she had put in so much effort to protect. Kayla looked up at the woman who was looking at her as if she was a criminal. I'm hungry. The woman smiled contemptuously, indicating for the left protector to buy it for her. Kayla hurriedly ordered, I want to eat noodles. The left protector had already gone far away, and it was unknown if he had heard her order. The woman raised her wrist and looked at her watch. She sneered and warned, the ship will arrive in half an hour. I warn you not to play any tricks. Kayla threw the spoon into the coffee and let out a soft zheng sound. She leaned back on the sofa and turned to look out the window. The situation was better than people. The only thing she could do was avoid direct conflict with these people. How do I know if my brother is in America? Kayla suddenly thought of this question. Previously, her brain seemed to have short-circuited and she had been led by Tia's nose. Now, she finally reacted. Assistant Guo glared at her like he was looking at an idiot. He sneered and took out his phone to call Tia. Kayla looked at her respectful appearance, as if he was going to lower himself to the ground. Kayla heard her answer yes and hung up the phone. Not long after, her phone rang. Assistant Guo picked up the phone and said to the other side politely, wait a minute. Then he turned on the speaker and put the phone on the table. Her familiar voice came from the phone. She was worried and anxious. Sister, sister, is it you? Hearing the familiar voice, Kayla, who had persisted for so long without revealing any signs of weakness, could not help but feel her eyes turn red. No, she could not let Yvonne worry for her. She cleared her throat and said, Yvonne, it's me. Are you okay? I'm fine. Sis. Where are you? When are you coming? Yvonne, you know that I have a air sickness. The tickets I bought might come a little late. You should be fine over there. Sis. The voice of Yvonne on the other side of the line stopped abruptly. The woman reached out and hung up the phone, putting the phone back. Kayla looked at her actions blankly. She still had a lot of words she wanted to say to her brother. It was stuck in her throat and her throat was dry. Her nose was sore and her eyes were red. Assistant Guo looked at her gloatingly. Without any sympathy, he motioned to left custodian, who had just returned from buying noodles, to put the food in front of her. It was a fried noodles with a fried golden egg added on it. The fragrance of fried eggs covered the bitter fragrance of coffee, and the sound of a whistle came from outside the window. Under the woman's impatient urging, Kayla ate the food tasteless. Then, as if he was driven out of the coffee shop, he was driven out of the coffee shop and headed to the dock facing the wild sea breeze. Listening to the sound of the whistle, in fact, the cruise ship was still far away. Kayla stood on the dock and looked at the boat hanging on the dock, 
floating and sinking on the sea. Her heart was also floating and sinking. The sea breeze messed up her hair. She reached out and tucked her hair behind her ears. She loosened her hand and they fluttered in the wind again. She turned to face the sea. A bright moon hung high in the sky. The silver moonlight shone down, casting a layer of hazy silver light on the sea. In the middle of the swaying waves, there seemed to be silver shining. Kayla's bitter face suddenly cracked, and she smiled slightly. She thought that the sea in the darkness would open its bloody mouth like a monster, but in fact, it was not like this. The sea in the night had its unique style. She remembered the poem she had read one month and one month ago, facing the sea and blooming in spring. Now that she faced the sea, she might not necessarily be able to bloom in spring, but she suddenly understood that she had to compromise the past that she called fate playing tricks on. Her hand unconsciously touched her stomach. In fact, there was nothing that she could not let go of. Before, she was just stubborn and refused to let go. She tried her best to fight for things that would never belong to her. Before, she had never dared to look directly at the relationship between her and Calvin. She also did not dare to look directly at the gap between her and Calvin. The difference in status, education level, and concept. Who said that only the people of ancient times paid attention to social status? She clearly knew that there was a huge gap between them, but she still dreamed of getting his love in the gap between Calvin's special treatment of her. But what could she do if she got it?